Hi, this is Judd Tully, and I'm an art critic and art world journalist. And this is the first edition of the Tully Report. I've invited Kenny Scharf to discuss his new paintings so we can go behind the scenes for an intimate look at a dynamic and unpretentious artist who has dazzled visual art audiences for over 25 years. Kenny Scharf burst on the New York East Village art scene in the early 1980s along with friends Keith Haring and Jean-Michel Basquiat. Those early shows at Club 57 on St. Mark's Place and the Fun Gallery on East 10th Street became part history and part legend for a new generation of artists. And remind me, um, in the East Village, in that the first gallery that you were associated with. Fun Gallery. Fun Gallery. And was that a lot of fun? There was a lot of fun. A lot of, uh, I mean, that time back in the late 70s, early 80s, mm -hmm. it was a very exciting time. There was, you know, so many amazing art artists and mm -hmm. new art being made. And it was really special in a way different than now, it was just for us. Right. No one else knew, we wanted everyone to know about it, right. but we didn't really care that right. much. It was for each other, because we were our only audience. So um, it's pretty uh, mm -hmm. concentrated, mm -hmm. uh, lots of amazing talent. For instance, so some of the, your fellow artists then showing would have been? Keith yeah. Haring uh, mm -hmm. and Basquiat, there mm -hmm. were two that I kind of felt uh, Early on, mm -hmm. almost like a Three Musketeers y thing of mm -hmm. the East Village mm -hmm. art boys or whatever. Mm -hmm. Sad that I, they left me behind. Yeah. Uh, but I, the kind of spirit mm -hmm. uh, of the time mm -hmm. uh, and, and the, the process of art making mm -hmm. is still what I believe in. And that was a storefront on, was it East 10th Street? 10th Street? Yeah. Well, the first one was on mm -hmm. 11th. And that was only open for a month, but it was on 10th Street. You're going from that kind of storefront, pretty funky, different economic sphere than today in Chelsea yeah. and this very kind of glamorous gallery. It's, uh, does that... Well, I guess I've been, um, early on, um, before the fun gallery, we were just showing our, our, our for one night, you know, it yeah. was in a nightclub. It was yeah. in Club 57 or Mud right. Club or... Yeah. Uh, you just had these one night events, uh, maybe mm -hmm. a single person show or a group show. The fun Gallery was an actual gallery, so at the time we were like, wow, we're showing in a gallery mm -hmm. and it's, um, the show stays up for more than one night, you know. Mm -hmm. So that kind of was already that other step. People, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes, not always, but sometimes came in and actually spent money and, mm -hmm. you know, uh, to look at art. Not long after the Fun Gallery, really soon after that, because the Fun Gallery got a lot of attention. Mm -hmm. uh, I started showing at Tony Schifrazi Gallery, which mm -hmm. was a real Soho gallery with big white walls. Yeah. Yeah. So I was pretty young when I started showing large scale mm -hmm. paintings mm -hmm. on that kind of, uh, mm -hmm. uh, the same kind of audience and same mm -hmm. kind of, I mean, I felt like, okay, well now I'm in a big gallery and I want to do big paintings. And I, I was very inspired by the, the New York School painting, which is really large really scale big. paintings. Right. Um, I love to, mm -hmm. to make big things. And mm -hmm. um, so I've been doing this for a long time. Right. Yeah. This painting is called Swamp Style. Mm -hmm. And um, it's inspired by the swamp mm -hmm. in uh, Bahia, Brazil, where mm -hmm. I reside sometimes. And is it a place that you go to physically and you're very intimate with in terms of the whole landscape? And I've been going there since 82. Mm -hmm. I've had the, the place there, uh, lived there off and on, sometimes for months at a time. Mm -hmm. For the first 20 years, there was no electricity, there was no road. Wow. Yeah, it was really isolated. It's very beautiful, very wild. How do you prepare a paint, like for this painting, did you do studies, is it all in your head, do you do a drawing, 
all in my head. You know, an inspiration from mm -hmm. the nature. Mm -hmm. uh, I was really looking at the birds. They were actually egrets, and mm -hmm. I guess these look more like egrets than the other one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but you know, I just kind of interpret in my way. I, mm -hmm. I put characters onto uh, plants mm -hmm. and animals, mm -hmm. uh, even objects. Mm -hmm. I really feel that mm -hmm. plants have personalities and mm -hmm. characters, mm -hmm. and so I. It's not just because I like, mm -hmm. think it's cute or anything. I actually feel that they're mm -hmm. alive and mm -hmm. that they are a, a, almost like a creature like we are. We just, they just can't walk and right. talk. But. Right. And can you talk a little bit about that transfer, like from inside your head to on the? Is it the canvas on the floor? How do you? Um, how do you? Sometimes the canvas mm -hmm. is on the floor. This one is not. You can see the actual right. drips. So yes, I started with the, the sky, which is these strips. Mm -hmm. In the very beginning, it kind of looks like a kind of maybe 1960s stain painting. I was going to say like Morris Lewis yeah. or it's very, Frankenthal or S. I love or, all yeah, that art. Yeah. So, uh, and the process and, mm -hmm. and, 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 the, and, and it, I love the way, you know, when you let nature do the work for you, mm -hmm. you know, these drips are you know, so delicate and so interesting for me. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's kind of like, using nature itself to mm -hmm. make the art. Mm -hmm. And not only the trees and the birds and the creatures, they're, I guess, crabs mm -hmm. and... Crabs? All sorts crabs of... Crabs and birds and... Yeah. But they look exactly like Kenny Scharf creatures, like how... They are. They are, yeah. That's why I said that, you know, mm -hmm. they're, um, mm -hmm. my looking at nature and, mm -hmm. you know, interpreting it mm -hmm. in my way. Mm -hmm. This is called oil painting, right? That's the I title, mean, mm -hmm. oil painting. Mm -hmm. um, as in catastrophic oil spill. As in catastrophic yeah. uh, mm -hmm. Gulf BP mm -hmm. oil spill. Mm -hmm. uh, I made the painting in July mm -hmm. while the spill was still going on. It's basically a, my reaction. Uh, yeah. I need to express something of my feelings about it mm -hmm. instead of just fume, you know, put it somewhere. This is a... A statement that you're making. Or, yeah, I mean, yeah. this mm -hmm. particular mm -hmm. it is basically oil painting, but it's the BP mm -hmm. spill. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not a new thing that I, uh, I'm i focusing on, right. on the subject matter mm -hmm. in my painting. Mm -hmm. In fact, almost all of them deal with uh, uh, the destruction of the planet in, in certain ways. Even the paintings that are, they look uh, just to be fun. Mm -hmm. They're, mm -hmm. There, it's up to the viewer, but I mm -hmm. know I have a lot of like. If I'm just celebrating nature, mm -hmm. it's almost like my my stance to believe that it will continue, like yeah. the fight against the destruction. So mm -hmm. in almost everything I do, mm -hmm. uh, even some of the other paintings uh, in the past shows that are, look more pop, mm -hmm. it I I have my feeling it's it's um, a celebration of pop, but it's also um, a, a warning about the dangers of consumerism mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. what it does to a world. So mm -hmm. pretty much that is kind of like my main obsession. I mean, are you an, an activist in the sense of environmental? Do you get involved with organizations? And mm -hmm. uh, I did a few um, rainforest benefits uh, mm -hmm. in the late 80s, early oh, 90s. Right. Uh -huh. Uh, called Don't Bungle the Jungle, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and we had some art shows and uh, had uh, concerts, and mm -hmm. it was uh, based on my firsthand uh, witnessing of the rainforest destruction down in Brazil mm -hmm. back in the 80s, when I first arrived there in 82, where my house is, is, was, is a, on the rain, coastal rainforest, um, there's only 1% left of the original forest that used to go all the way, f over a thousand miles from the north of Brazil, all the way below Rio. And there's only 1% left, and that is actually where I am, that wow. little bit of coastal rainforest. The reason there's only 1% left is because the population is pretty much on the coast. Mm -hmm. um, so while I was there, 
in the 80s, I would look up in the hills, which were just thickly covered. Uh, I just, just, I'd come back the next year and there'd be like a huge mm -hmm. swath just mm -hmm. gone. Mm -hmm. And you could see the erosion, mm -hmm. all the red earth and the, the earth falling down mm -hmm. from the mm -hmm. lack of roots. Mm -hmm. And then there'd be a scattering of cows on it. And mm -hmm. The trees, the trunks, you know, almost as wide as this room one year and then you come back next year and they're gone it's just burnt and it's really horrific uh, mm. to have to mm. see that mm. uh, it was really shocking and i tried to talk to the the people that lived around there and there didn't seem to be anybody seemed to think that it was any big deal uh their attitude was um there's so much more they don't realize yeah. there isn't growing up in the 60s uh, when ecology movement was starting you know, we were taught all this about the population explosion and mm -hmm. pollution, and mm -hmm. it was all happening then, and the prediction of what would be unless we change was very strong back yes. when I was a little kid. Yeah. So I don't understand why here we are, you know, mm -hmm. almost 50 years later, and people are like, well, what are we going to do? Yeah. Well, you know, we know what we have to do. We have mm -hmm. to change the way we mm -hmm. do things. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying I'm a saint or anything. I fly airplanes. I'll, I'll take, I take a cab here, you know, use petroleum. Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. part of the system. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm very aware of it. Mm -hmm. Maybe that would be a difference. I wish I didn't have to be. Mm -hmm. And I don't have to be. I could go to Brazil and never leave there. Mm -hmm. uh, we have solar energy and, you know, we can, I can live off the land. But uh, I choose to be a part of uh, this society and right. civilization. So I'm part of the problem you haven't as well dropped out in no i'm sense. you know yeah. i yeah i'm just mm -hmm. guilty i'm part of the whole system mm -hmm. yeah but i'm very aware of it when you were a kid did you collect insects in the sense of That's like funny that you say that yeah. i mm -hmm. when i was a kid i mm -hmm. saw this film about the life of the ladybug mm -hmm. it's one of those films you see in school and so i went in my backyard and i saw these um Oh, those are the, the eggs of the ladybug that I saw in the film. So I broke a piece off, put it in a jar, and I wa waited and waited, and then the eggs hatched and they turned into these larvae, mm -hmm. these ladybug larvae. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, I'm going to go find some aphids to feed them, like they did in the film. And I found aphids and watched them devour the aphids, and every day I was feeding them more aphids, and then they go into a pupa, mm -hmm. and then they go into ladybugs, and I let them free. So I used to raise ladybugs as a kid. Wow. Where was that? In the San Fernando Valley, uh -huh. in Los Angeles. So there were plenty of... Lots of aphids, lots yeah. of ladybugs. Yeah. Did that with my kids. We mm -hmm. found pupas and let mm -hmm. them go and feed them leaves. And then we think they're going to be a butterfly. And then, ooh, it's an ugly moth. <laughs> Just the whole process. Yeah. Is, yeah. I find fascinating. The central figure here is also, I mean, the happy happy-go-lucky flower, it mm -hmm. seems. And you got, we were talking about ladybugs. the ladybugs. There they are. Daisy bugs. Daisy. It's called. Daisy bugs. <laughs> Daisy yeah. bugs. Do you make a lot of drawings or sketches, or it's really you just think about it and do it? And, That's and it. Like I'm, you don't have notebooks lying around. No, I, I, I don't know why I have this weird, I uh, don't like the way the pencil sounds and feels on a piece of paper. There's like, it's dry. There's something about the dryness of a pencil on paper. I don't like it. I don't mm -hmm. like pencil. So I always prefer if I have to draw using a ballpoint pen. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't um, mm -hmm. make glimmer any drawings. Not, I'm not saying never, Right. but mo almost mm -hmm. never mm -hmm. do I make preliminary drawings. I kind of, the whole process for me uh, part of my enjoyment and mm -hmm. excitement is not knowing exactly what is going to happen. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'll just start off with this, oh, you know, there's too much blue, and I, I'm going to do a yellow painting. So mm -hmm. I did the yellow background, and I'm like, oh, God. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking more about yellow, and I'm like daisies, and, mm -hmm. you know, like, so it's just kind of like let it happen. Mm -hmm. And um, for me, that's like part of the fun is not mm -hmm. knowing. And mm -hmm. I, I've, believe in improvisation and yes mm -hmm. I love all that spirit uh, mm -hmm. and the, and like well, what's going to happen and you think oh I'm going to do this and then it, oh, 
doesn't look like that. Oh, well, what does it look like? Oh, it looks like that. And then it turns into that. So just like this whole process and mm -hmm. this journey mm -hmm. that a painting uh, takes me, mm -hmm. um, I, I get really excited not knowing. And what, a, I mean, and in this painting or in any of the paintings here, the different, I mean, how many different kinds of media are you using? Just to, can you kind of break it down just a little bit? Yeah. I mean, just, These yeah. are very simple yeah. uh, compared to some of the other mm -hmm. works mm -hmm. uh, that I've been doing recently because mm -hmm. um, these are using a no, I'm not using any photographic imagery. Mm -hmm. I'm not studying any, any mm -hmm. printed matter. No silk screen. I'm mm -hmm. using all these various things. So these are pretty, pretty mm -hmm. sim simple. It's just this kind of a stainy, washy, background mm -hmm. of acrylic mm -hmm. and then another layer which is spray paint mm -hmm. and then the third layer which is oil paint mm -hmm. so there's three layers mm -hmm. uh, and it kind of creates this depth yes uh, mm -hmm. physically mm -hmm. and uh, literally mm -hmm. I mean literally and imaginatively mm -hmm. I had a feeling about it before and certainly in terms of this that kind of all over or action painting uh -huh. or New York school in totally. terms of what you're doing but I don't think Many people necessarily get that with your work, or I, I, I mean, have it's some mm -hmm. scholarly types mm -hmm. have pointed it out to uh -huh. me that they thought like oh, I see the like, Jackson Pollock in there, and I'm mm -hmm. like, thank you. I mean, yeah. Jackson Pollock is one of my favorite artists, mm -hmm. and I I think I've I take a lot from Jackson Pollock mm -hmm. and. Uh, the all overness, mm -hmm. uh, the, the kind of expansive all overness, uh, where it's like, well, this is just a picture mm -hmm. in a bigger picture. Right. So I, I very much relate to that mm -hmm. kind of like expansive universe mm. of, a, of an action painting of Pollock. And then also a stain painting of Morris Lewis. And mm -hmm. I love painting about paint mm -hmm. and painting about painting. Um, so there's so many like great things I love about all the art movements of the 20th century. Mm. And I see, um, kind of like, like to take elements of the things that mm -hmm. I love of all these specific movements and putting them together into uh, my own mix, which is, um, I mean, I think that has a lot to do with where we are right now, mm -hmm. not only in the world of culture, but in the world of art where there isn't any one thing. Mm -hmm. There isn't like the way it used to be. It was like, oh, now we have cubism, and now mm -hmm. we have surrealism, and now we have right. abstract expression. It was very much like these chunks of movements. That, right. And if you weren't in that chunk of that thing, you might be left behind, mm -hmm. or maybe looked at later and go, oh, well, we forgot to look at that person because they weren't part of that movement. Yeah. I don't really see that anymore. I, I, mm. I think um, it's more diffuse or there's something. There's so yeah, many yeah, ways yeah, of, of yeah. making art. and. Yeah. Uh, I'm very interested in combining all these elements mm -hmm. to, it's almost like putting all these things in a blender and mm -hmm. they come out with a, a new hybrid of kind of making art. Mm. <laughs> That's good. <laughs>. Now suddenly we've moved, it seems, underwater. That's right. With this painting that uh, you're standing in front of. And we are underwater. Mm -hmm. And agua is pretty easy. Right. Um, I like to make up mm -hmm. words. Uh, so yeah, it's an underwater life fantasy. I, I started uh, this kind of mindset or series of paintings while mm -hmm. I was in Brazil mm -hmm. and the painting stayed behind, mm -hmm. but I felt the spirit of the way of making the painting, mm -hmm. the subject matter, uh, the kind of looseness mm -hmm. um, started in Brazil when mm -hmm. I was there. Mm -hmm. And then um, when I got back to LA, I just wanted to continue in that same mm -hmm. mindset, keep that part of me uh, going. Do you make paintings like super fast um, in terms of? Some people think so. Yeah. I guess I'm pretty fast. Mm -hmm. uh, when they have a lot of detail, mm -hmm. like I can just do the main structure of the painting. It mm -hmm. take me a week, and and, mm -hmm. I'm, and then I can spend two more weeks on detail, mm -hmm. you know, because mm -hmm. details just take a long mm -hmm. time because you mm -hmm. need to fill up space. There isn't a hell of a lot of detail here. Maybe 
the other one, there's a lot of little details. What I wanted also to ask you about, you have this, I mean, it's not exactly a cast of characters, but there's a whole vocabulary of creatures, of, of uh, they're animated, there's a humor. It's sort of the opposite to me of, it's not kitschy or it's not hokey, but how do you manage to do that? I mean, is, Thank it, you. is it, is it? Uh, it's just, um, I, I, you know, mm -hmm. the word heartfelt, it sounds mm -hmm. kind of hokey, but mm -hmm. it is. I mean, yeah. I really, mm -hmm. they are my characters mm -hmm. and I, they, they allow me to mm -hmm. really express the emotion mm -hmm. that I want mm -hmm. them to. Mm -hmm. uh, and I actually, you know, give a character and an expression mm -hmm. and I look at it and I kind of feel the expression. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they are kind of real to me, the emotions that I'm, mm -hmm. that I'm mm -hmm. bringing out. Like I, I know car people think of cartoons as like a kiddie stuff. Well, cartoons, I think, have incredible expression and incredible emotion, mm -hmm. and I just see it as, an, as a great way of expressing. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about, in terms of, you developed your style, mm -hmm. your practice in New York, primarily, would you say? In no, I've been painting since I was a little kid. Okay. And um, when you look at some of those little sketchbooks or little paintings that I did, uh, as young as five. So you have them? Some, Some. of them, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, I really haven't changed uh, anything. I'm still... It's amazing. The same subject matter uh -huh. uh, mm -hmm. that I always did. Uh, mm -hmm. Nature, mm -hmm. uh, insects, mm -hmm. plant life. Mm -hmm. uh, then I also was always into cityscapes and like pop. Mm -hmm. uh, imagery and mm -hmm. cartoons and mm -hmm. so I kind of developed my mm. uh, vocabulary really young. Mm -hmm. Sounds it. Yeah. yeah. And like I you know I've even been accused of being infantile in my <laughs> vocabulary right. but right. I didn't think that was a bad thing. Right. I mean I I never get bored of it so mm -hmm. nature is never boring to me. You, you have plans for these. I, well, mm -hmm. this is um, something that I designed to be a picnic table benches umbrella. Mm -hmm. And so this is the, the model, mm -hmm. you know, small scale version of that. Mm -hmm. We kind of like the way they look sculpturally as mm -hmm. a small sculpture, independent of their function that I would like to see one day, mm -hmm. maybe soon. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, I would like to, I would like to sit at this bench and eat on the table under the mm -hmm. the, the nuclear bomb. As I said, I, mm -hmm. I keep the themes. Mm -hmm. I kind of never change them. Mm -hmm. And the theme of you know, in celebrating life and enjoying things in the midst of a catastrophe mm -hmm. about to happen or mm -hmm. happening mm -hmm. has been a kind of a constant theme. Mm -hmm. So the idea of a picnicking under the mushroom cloud is kind of, kind of works for me. Yeah. And have you done, have you made functional objects yes. before? I mean, I've in terms of designing things for <laughs> a long time. I, um, I really like designing, uh, objects. Uh, I don't really get to do it that often. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I'm very interested in design and mm -hmm. uh, creating mm -hmm. art that can be used functionally. Mm -hmm. So we seem to be on the Kenny Sharp block because Directly across the street, there are two uh, gates. Gates. There we go. Iron gates, and with your work mm -hmm. on them. Tell me about that. It, this is a, a big project. It's a project mm -hmm. that uh, started in November, mm -hmm. but I kind of stopped it because it was just too dark mm -hmm. and too cold. And uh, I'm going to resume it in May. Mm -hmm. But I've been offered to do all these gates all over Manhattan. Mm -hmm. the, I mean, I know you've done a lot of things outdoors, graffiti, you know, allowed or not allowed. But this is 
kind of a more formal. Yes, this is a uh, sanctioned. Sanctioned. Mm -hmm. That would be a good word. Mm -hmm. This is a sanctioned project. Mm -hmm. Just because I've done and I still do occasionally illegal spray painting, mm -hmm. um, it's nice to have it sanctioned and yeah. you don't have to look over mm -hmm. your shoulder and you have time mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, or more time. And you have a very big work uh, that's on the Bowery and Houston Street mm -hmm. and there was an infamous incident in the first snowstorm of yep. the winter where you were, what is the proper term when... Well, I, I see it as like a, a vandalism. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Uh, right. It's a... Your wall is vandalized. Graffiti taggers. Yeah. Because I, I, I wouldn't really call them artists because I right. don't see them as someone who, mm -hmm. people who care about art or know about art. Mm -hmm. It's more about just attention. And unfortunately, I don't think it was a personally about me. I think it was mm -hmm. the location and mm -hmm. the attention that the wall was getting. So they, that was the opportunity for them to attack it. Cause mm -hmm. it pretty much an attack. Uh, and they do it on when there's when a big snowstorm. So uh, no one's around. Yeah, it is. That, it's like a very childish uh, thing. It's like I, I see. Look, if they want to, you know, put their their name mm -hmm. over and over all over the city, go ahead and do it. But why don't you do it on top of a Burger King or like an yeah. ugly something that right. just needs a little decoration? Yeah. It's mm -hmm. Like to do it on top of of what I did is kind of an assault, it's like, um, you know. Mm -hmm. They call it aggravated assault. I mean, in the, you know. Like I'm pretty the, aggravated about yeah, it. I bet. But, you know, I just have to deal with it. And mm. the first time I got pretty upset, and then the second time I was like, I already kind of mourned it, because it'll never really be the same again. Mm -hmm. uh, and then tomorrow I'm going to go back and repair for the second time, and then just hope for the best, you know, just do the best I can. Mm -hmm.